All right, good morning. Another happy Saturday here at Twin Stick Garage. Let's take a look at what we accomplished in the previous snowman episode. So, if you recall from the other, other uh, episode there, we, we got everything into primer and I definitely learned a few things. <laughs> I guess the first off is there's no hiding a, a crappy sanding job. So what I thought was smooth and was ready to go was not quite good enough. So as soon as I put primer on it, you can just tell that that's just a bumpy mess. And there's some pinholes there. So that needs to get sanded out and some other spots. But, but overall, not too bad. I mean, again, another area that needs more sanding. But you look at the door and it just turned out beautiful. So there was definitely some good and some bad. So I'm pretty happy with that. Very smooth. Again, a little more work that needs doing up there. But overall, not too shabby for a guy that doesn't know what he's doing. So some of the other learnings that I figured out was you can never have enough light when you're painting. So what I'm probably going to do is rig up a few more of those LED bars because there was another spot over here on this side, I didn't quite have enough light because of course that was blocking the window. So I didn't have any natural light and I didn't have any LED bars on this side. And if you can see there, I got a pretty, pretty good run. I was laying it on a little too thick. And the river runs through it. And I think I went over that twice. So no big deal, we can sand that out. And another learning was the hood. So this is a, so I was standing on the scaffold here and I was trying to reach over to the center of the hood to get a nice parallel spray going. And it's just a little too far of a reach. So I ended up losing my balance and putting my knee down. So you can see that nice jean mark there that I'll have to, that I'll have to sand out. So what I'm thinking, I mean, normally you tip these hoods all the way forward and just spray it from the front with a ladder or a scaffold in the front. But of course I've got kind of a, I'm a pretty close quarters here. Ideally this truck would have been a little farther back. So I don't have enough room to open it all the way forward. So what I might do is maybe open it up at a 45 and see if there's still enough room to get a ladder there. And then I could paint uh, from the front and then just do the sides. So that was a learning. Uh, the other big one was up on top uh, later in the, in the paint job. See if I can climb up on the scaffold without falling off. Uh, where was it again? Yeah, right here. So what that is, is I didn't have an inline water filter. I had a water filter back by the compressor, but it's still, uh, again, I guess it got enough condensation in the line and it plopped out a big water, a couple water droplets. So again, we can sand that out, but it was a good learning. So I got some inline water filters that I'll make sure I use before I lay down paint. And then a few little nibs of this high build primer, some of the extra material plopped out. So we'll have to sand that down, but not too bad. Um, I noticed my, my air adjustment or my, uh, my regulator would change slightly from time to time. So sometimes it would, would increase in pressure. I don't know if it was a faulty regulator, so I got a new one, but at times it would, it would spray dry and I, and I'd look down and the pressure had gone from whatever I had it set at 25 and it would go in up to like 40. So there's some spots that are a little dry. Again, we can sand that down, but overall, not too bad. Not too bad for a guy that, like I said, doesn't know what he's doing. And this is the, this is the first truck I've ever painted, but I think it'll work. So what we're doing today is I'm going to try and I'm going to try and fix up all the, the little mistakes, the areas that I didn't patch up too well. And then I'll just prime those areas that I actually touch up. No need to prime the whole truck again. And then I'm going to dry sand it down to 320 with a DA and wipe it all down. I've also got to do, I've also got to prime the visor and then the air cans. I bought a board to put between the two ladders. So I'll hang the air cans there. We'll sand those down. We'll get everything into primer. And then we'll uh, give, the, give the old paint a try. So I went to C-Max, my favorite paint supply shop on the west end of Edmonton. And there's some more primer. And here's actually the Hyundai Night Shadow Brown. 
So again, the movie truck wasn't black. Well, I think one of them was, but the other two were kind of had a coffee black, kind of a brown tint to it. So that's what we're gonna try and paint the truck. If you watched an earlier episode, this is the same paint that I used on the front of the, uh, the sleeper bunk and then the back of the cab. So that's what we're gonna try and lay down. And I never painted a truck before, so we'll see how it turns out. It's a, you know, it's an off black color, which of course is the hardest thing to spray. So probably should have painted this truck white, but then it wouldn't match the movie. So with that, I'll stop talking and, uh, and start working. These are my $5 air cans that I picked up at Ritchie Brothers, I don't know, last year, year before. And it was, a, it was a package of truck parts. It was the air cans and the doors and some mirror brackets and a bunch of other stuff. And I put a minimum bit of $5 on there and a max bit of like 500 because these, these air cans match the 74 Kenworth in Smoking the Band at the movie truck perfectly. So I really wanted to get them, but nobody bid against me. So I ended up winning them for five bucks. So probably spent more than a, on a cup of Starbucks coffee than I did on these air cans. But so it was a heck of a score. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to get the caps off. Obviously don't need paint on these guys, but I'll get these, the flat tops and I can hang them just like I did the visor. And then I can paint those and then we'll sand down the cans themselves. There's a couple little small dings, stuff that needs to be filled in and then obviously cleaned all up and we'll prime those as well. And what I was planning to do was flip them upside down. And that's why I went and got a two by eight, a nice long 10 footer that I, I'll probably go down maybe one more level. And then I can set the, set the cans on the board here and then I could paint them, give them a turn and paint the other side. But I can't believe the cost of lumber, how silly it is. This was a two by eight, 10 footer at Home Depot and it was damn near 30 bucks. So I really, I feel bad for folks that are trying to to build shops or, or homes right now because it's, it's insane. So of course the cans have the little uh, stud sticking out there. So I thought I might drill a couple holes. I mean, if this works, it'll actually want to keep them in place like that. Nice, give a little more stability. I think that should work just fine. Sleeping back, rolled up in the stash behind your couch. And just knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words and bonds. And each things that have dried up on some life. That keeps you in the back road by the rivers of my memory. It keeps you ever to the low my mind. And it's not clinging to the rocks and ivy Planted on their columns now that binds me Or something that somebody said Because they thought we'd fit together walking So next I'm just going to whip up a little batch of putty And fill in There's a couple little minor dents And dings So the reason I painted the top black obviously that's not the same color as the Hyundai brown but because these will be upside down the paint's not going to hit that and the cap's going to go on there anyway so I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be white underneath any spot that I didn't get to I think that'll work just fine uh, probably run a little low on this just like that Oh man, a lot of hardener too. Give it a little knead. Bead across the side. Okay. 
I like watching uh, auto body videos on YouTube and Paint Society is one of my favorites. He does great work and really explains what he's doing. He's a great teacher. And he always says, don't overthink it. Just get in there and paint. I kind of like that. But then he also, one of his videos, he mentioned the Stevie Wonder test. So you look away and you just kind of feel with a glove on and you can kind of feel the, the spots that are low. Use your hands, not your eyes. One thing I'm learning about auto body stuff is you got to take your time. I mean, it uh, it's going to take how long it's going to take. You can't you can't rush it at all. But if you take your time, it actually turns out half decent. So I think these cans are ready. I gave the visor another. Uh, well, I guess this is 220. I got to go 320 on the cans, and then uh, we'll wipe them down, and they'll be ready for primer. Same thing with the visor, and I guess now that the fun part's over, I can dive into the uh, fixing up the truck. So let's get at her. Okay, so now I'm going to spray a, a guide coat, just a sandable primer, and we'll let this dry. And then I plan to block it out, and we'll see if there's any high spots left. Block it out with 320. I guess I should have a painting mask on. There, something like that. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting in the time. I didn't, uh, I didn't put enough hours or enough, uh, enough effort into around the headlights, but that's okay. Now's the time to fix it up. So I'll sand it down smooth. I'll probably put a little bit of filler in in some of the spots there with the pinholes and some of the low spots. And then we'll sand that down again. And then again, we can wipe it down and I can spray primer on this when I go to spray the, uh, the cans and the visor. All right, keep at it. Oh, this is taking forever, but making progress, even though I have to do some hand sanding in here, but I'm digging that. There's one little low spot there, I'd probably put a tiny bit of filler in, but it's looking a lot better. Like I always say the more time you put in, the, the better result you're going to get. You can see the little river, river run there. It's pretty easy to set it out. I'm using uh, 150 and then I'll come back and do a 320, make it nice and smooth. No big deal. Okay, I'm running out of steam. This has uh, been an entire Saturday. Probably doesn't look like it in the video, but uh, Trust me, I've been working the entire day. So what I've done is I've sanded down all the areas that need a little bit of um, need a little bit of work. So I sanded those down, and what I'm planning to do is I'm going to mix up a small batch of primer and just paint those areas, and we'll let it set overnight. And while I'm doing that, I'll also paint the air cans and the visor, and we'll let this set overnight, and then I'll hit it again Sunday morning. I'm going to come back here and 
320 the entire truck with the orbital uh, wipe it all down we'll blow out i've already blown out the uh the booth but i haven't washed it I'm just doing a little bit of primer so i'm not too worried about it but tomorrow i'm going to wash the floor down get it good and wet and then we'll lay down that paint and see if it works so i'm also stepping up my game here if you recall from the previous episode where i worked on snowman i was just pouring the the wax and grease remover right onto the rag and smearing it around but i thought i'd uh, go to a spray bottle oh that's probably we'll try and get there we go a little bit of a mist instead a little more even a little more even of a spray and not so uh, concentrated yeah that's nice so we'll wipe all this stuff down and then we'll uh let's see we'll mix up a patch of primer and see how they prime up yeah this spray bottle works way better get it good and clean i think it's just like ethanol or some sort of alcohol because it evaporates pretty quick and again they say you're not supposed to not supposed to go different directions just one direction pick one direction and go back and forth so i sanded it out a little bit more where that bar was because i could see a bit of a line there and i'll put another coat of primer up on that side it's a tough time of year right now because the poplar fluff is blowing around so i don't want to open the garage doors but when i'm sanding i need air so I opened the man door over by the Duke, but then I got a whole bunch of white fluff coming in. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of fighting that. But it's pretty clean now. And like I say, got the booth as clean as I could get tonight. I think it'll be fine just for the, uh, for priming. Okay, we got the fan going. Got my paint booth set up. I got the Oilers game on, so hopefully I can hear when they score. And we'll mix up a batch of paint. Okay, so I like to go full, full out and back off the main until it just touches and then I like to do one more full turn from there lock that in and then the fan I like all the way out and then just a quarter tighten it up four parts This guy takes it up to the five. There. That should be the same ratio as what I had going last week. Okay, and into the gun we go. Like that should do it. Okay, let's get spraying. Yeah, I'm digging that.
Oh. Okay, time to go watch some hockey. See you tomorrow. All right, good morning. So back at it again. Looks like the primer set up quite nice overnight. Visor looks good. Look at those cans. So home stretch now. Uh, I'm gonna sand down the entire truck using 320. One of the guys at uh, C-Max was saying that's what you want for single stage. If you do a base clear, then you gotta get a little smoother and go to like a 400 or a 600. So we'll sand her all down 320 and get rid of any little remaining nibs like that guy. And then we'll wipe the truck down and then hopefully we have a nice palette to put on that, uh, that paint. And just to reiterate, I've never painted before. This is the first truck I've ever done. So fingers crossed, it turns out, Guess let's see. Getting that last little bit of dust off. Getting close. I'm excited now. It's like I'm writing a final exam or something. All right, boost ready. So let us mix up some paint. So I'm trying to remember all the different things I've learned from talking to people and watching videos. <laughs> One of them that I kind of liked was. You got to think that you're a robot. How would a robot paint? So you're just like, I am a robot, down. I am a robot, down. I am a robot. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to, what other, hit the other tricks? They say, don't watch where you're going, watch where you've been, is another tip that I got. And kind of watch what the paint's doing. So hopefully I have enough light. I'm going to move the lighting around and make sure, I guess I better put my mask on, and make sure I can, uh, can see what it's doing. Man, I hope this turns out. I don't want to sand it all down again and start over. Okay. Oh, look at that. Lovely, lovely color. It almost looks black with a little bit of gold fleck in it. So in the, when it's dark it looks black, but in the sunlight it's got a bit of a brown tint. It's just beautiful paint. And it's kind of my homage to the, to the, I think one of the trucks was black and two of them were brown. So it's an homage to the, to the, what do they call it, coffee black, slightly brown ones. So, against my better judgment, I went and bought another one of these stupid things. Find out if it was just operator error. Okay, so it's four to two to one. So, four parts paint, uh, two parts reducer, and one part activator. Okay. So we'll just do four. Well, I guess I can't use that one. So I need four, five, six, seven. I need seven. So there we go. There's a seven. So four, two, one. Okay. Uh, where's the seven? Okay. Don't spell it, Mark. There's four. Almost. Uh, a couple little drops, I can live with that. Okay, two parts reducer. One, two. And your glove. Okay, there's no reason to hurry because this paint takes four hours to harden up. So I'm going to try and take my time and enjoy it.
And one more part. Activator. Okay, first batch of paint. Ready to party. So I'm gonna try my new Italian gun. But it's got the, uh, so I think this is the fan. And that's obviously the main, but I don't know what this max zero, I don't know if it's max flow, zero flow. So I'm just gonna put it up, put it on max and hope for the best. Oh, I should check the pressure, I guess. Yeah, it's good. It's the same regulator I used last night to do the primer. So I was wondering what this is for. I thought it might have been for uh, for the funnel, but it could spray out, so I don't think I'm going to use that. We'll try that instead. Okay, that looks good and stirred. Don't spill any, Mark. This stuff's expensive. There. That should get us started. Like a good wine or a good whiskey, you want to get every drop. Okay. Well, let's give her a go. Tune in next week for the exciting conclusion, Woody's Finest Hour! Hey, wait, wait a minute, what, what happened? What happens next? Come on, let's see the next episode! Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe, and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.